Welcome to MTD Technical Corner. I'm here with Alex Newman with First M from First MTA. Welcome to the show, Alex. Cheers, Ryan. Thanks for having us. Yeah, no worries. Absolutely no problems. Pleasure having you here. We're going to be talking about the WallMag magnetic base system. Now, could you give me a quick overview of the, of the system, please? Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, WallMag are a Czech company. have been specializing in magnetics for 60 years now, um, over 60 years. Um, they offer a wide range of magnetic solutions uh, for kind of the CNC industry, um, whether that be kind of milling, turning, grinding, um, lots of different options. So what's the current product range? What, what specific magnet, magnetic so, bases do they do? So it's kind of broken into three different sections. You've got the permanent magnet, um, the electromagnets and the electro-permanent magnets. And what's so, the difference between those, please? So the permanent magnets are very much kind of lever operated, um, so manually actuated. And um, so they have a lot of advantages in terms of if you want a flexible solution that's easy to take on and off of the machine or move on to different machines, you obviously don't have to take a controller with you. Um, so it makes life a lot easier and those come in both kind of milling and turning um, options. So that's just an all-in-one solution. There's no wires coming out of it. It's just no. a single lever. You clamp it down. Very easy to use. Yeah, exactly. Um, the next one, uh, electromagnets um, require a constant current running through them. Um, they're nice in terms of you're um, easily able to adjust the amount of grip force. Um, by adjusting the current going so through So does that magnet. come in the form of an extra control controller box or can you control yeah. that via your so machine? So both the electromagnets and the electro-permanent magnets both use a separate controller. So um, yeah, that's just, um, yeah, you can either have that integrated into the machine or you can have it um, as a separate unit. And so how do the electro-permanent magnets work? So the electro-permanent magnets are act, uh, activated by a pulse of electricity. So it will be pulsed to um, magnetise and then a pulse to demagnetise the magnet. Right, okay. um, so it has the advantage of not having to be constantly connected. So let's say you were using it on a fourth or fifth axis, for example, you wouldn't have any cables that you have to worry about, but still have the ease of using a... Um, an automated system. Exactly. Fair enough. So you, you can control from the, from the machine control. So can you give us a quick overview of why you would use, why would you, so I've, I've never used a mag base per, uh, personally before. I've always just used bog standard vices. Why would you use a magnetic base on your machine tool, your surface grinder, or did you mention you could even use them on lathes? Yes. So, I mean, one, one of the main things is the setup time. Um, as long as they're on the, um, on the machine, you can change between different size workpieces very quickly and easily. Obviously, you're not having to move clamps around or anything like that. You just kind of plonk it on and away you go. So what machining processes lend themselves to these mag bases? So machining processes, um, obviously we do um, grinding applications and milling applications and turning applications. We've also got um, magnets that are more suited to EDM as well. So um, that can be quite beneficial. With the milling as well, it leads itself to kind of having access to five sides of the component. Obviously you've got no clamps in the way. And also by doing that, you're not having any sort of excess material and no potential damage from clamping it or anything like that. So if you've got fragile components, if you've got loads yeah. of steel components that happen to be maybe small, thin and fragile, this is the I perfect know. solution for you. No, definitely. I mean, I, um, the, the smallest, um, the smallest thickness that we can get down to is 1.5 millimeters, um, which really does leave a lot of options open. Obviously the, the way you go about selecting a magnet for that sort of application is the, um, the pitch of the poles. So the more fine the poles are. The, so the for example, with this, you've got a small thin component, so you need exactly. quite fine pitch on your poles. Is that correct? Yeah. To be able to, to be able to put that optimum amount of grip force in. To but be a able single to steel that. part you can have quite coarse poles. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, um, as you can see underneath this magnet, we've got the master mill and as you can see large poles, big spacing on them. Um, obviously the more poles that you cover, the more grip force that you have, but yeah, depending on the application, you could get away with um, putting smaller components on there. Do you find that people need to monitor the coarseness of their poles and measure and, and calculate what grip force they're going to achieve on certain certain material I mean, sizes it's worth looking at obviously if you're only covering um a small number of poles and you perhaps want to go to some quite heavy machining in from the side there's the potential there for shift of the component or anything like that in which case you might look at putting stops around the component to try and um try and avoid that situation but for a hefty u drill right there we just saw exactly but yeah for for most applications like you can see there you can that's get a pretty away hefty with, face milling again yeah, but it's pretty cool but you can get away with not any stops visible there at all so access to all of the sides of the uh, component so you obviously use the stops to stop the part from slipping if you have a quite a high force operation 
How repeatable are those stops in terms of repeat work? If you're putting the same job in, can you leave the job and not probe it up before you start the next operation? Yeah, exactly. If you're using stops, it's exactly the same as you'd see in fixturing or with the vice. As long as you're putting the component up against the stops, you know that that's going to be there at the same place every time. So who's going to buy this kind of equipment? Is it people doing repeat work? Is it people doing one-offs? Is it somewhere in the middle? I mean, it can be used for a wide range of applications. I mean, obviously, you've got the advantage of not having much to set up if you're doing one-offs, but at the same time, if you're doing that production run and you do go down the electromagnet route or the electro-permanent, you know, you can put those, if they are integrated into the machine tool, you can put that automation in to whether it be robotic loading um, or whether it's loaded by an operator, you can really make that a lot more fluid than you would necessarily see in other work holding. Without having to wire in some pneumatic vice, vice grips exactly. and worry about your, your accuracy with the vice as soon as it clamps on, then so you, you, if you install one of these, then you're actually looking at future proof in your machine for maybe automation in the future or auto automation right now if you're ready for it. Perfect, yeah, as long as you've got the correct components for it, it's ideal. Fantastic. And also we can see right now you've got some quite small parts on the mag base here that you're surface grinding. So obviously it lends itself to, to surface grinding as well. My personal experience is in milling mostly, so that's what I like talking about. But, exactly. but surface grinding, I guess if you want accurate, uh, accurate flats on parts and you can't hold those obviously, De so you need a mag base. Definitely. And with the, um, with the bases, they've all got a grinding um, allowance to them as well. So they can actually be ground on the machine bed to ensure that you're getting those um, that exact flatness that you're looking for. Fantastic, which is obviously what you need if you're, if you're surface grinding. Exactly. Well, thank you very much, Alex. I've learned a lot about mag bases today and a bit, a bit of surface grinding as well. Um, if, you find, if you think you need a mag base, then uh, contact First MTA. This has been another MTD Technical Corner. Thank you very much for coming. Cheers, Ron. Thanks.